revamped notification icon, slightly different control panels, the dynamic i- I mean, Hyper Island. These are just some of the new features that come with Xiaomi Hyper OS 3. We've been using the Poco 8 Pro running the latest software for weeks now, and I must say, there are plenty more changes to see here. So in this video, we're gonna take a closer look at what's different or what's improved with Hyper OS 3. And on top of that, we're giving you guys some tips and tricks to make the most out of your Xiaomi, Redmi, or Poco devices. Hello from the other side, I'm your host CJ. Roll that intro. Booting up into Hyper OS 3, the very first thing I noticed are the new notification icons. Well, aside from looking a lot more iOS now, they're a bit bigger, bolder, and more refined in my opinion. Going into the home screen, however, the app icons are supposed to be updated as well. Apparently, they're not. At least in this Poco F8 Pro that we have, or for any other OS 3 compatible Poco phones for that matter. It's a Poco launcher thing, and we could only wonder why. Why? Why did Poco stick with the old icons? Eh? Anyways, I found a fix for that and I'm gonna spill the sauce later when we get to our tips and tricks so sit tight and relax. Swiping down from the right shows us the slightly updated control center. Instead of the blue fill when toggled, it's now white and certain icons vary in color. For example, the brightness slider icon is in orange, D&D mode is in purple, and the rest are in blue. The rectangular UI elements have more pronounced rounded corners, but that's about it for the control center. Now, one thing that's very hyped about Hyper OS 3 is the so-called Hyper Island. So, it looks kinda like this. So here is your Spotify song, for instance. If you swipe up, you see it right there? They're a bit late to the party, yeah, but this thing works like a charm. It shows live updates for media playback, flashlight, timer, voice recorder, and more. And just like the actual thing, it's honestly smooth and you can cycle through different operations as well. What's unique here is that on some activities like the timer, you can simply swipe down to open the app as a floating window. However, it's quite a bummer that specific live activities such as delivery apps aren't natively working just yet. And not all activity-based notifications notifications are shown. Going back to the lock screen, a customized button pops up by long pressing on an empty space. So if we go like this, you can see customized lock screen after I put the password. There's not a lot of change here except for a few new wallpapers and more flexible customization options. Unlike before, all clock styles are now found in one place, so this definitely makes it easier to experiment with different looks. They also kept the ability to save different setups, so thumbs up for that. Of all the first party Xiaomi apps, the gallery has the biggest glow up in terms of functionality. The visuals are mostly the same, and I can only highlight a few things, like when you scroll on the photos page, there's now a subtle blur at the top, and you can also see the little frosted glass effect on the navigation pill. The video player has a nice quality of life update too. The playback controls are directly shown and don't replace the navigation icons anymore during playback. This wasn't the case before, making it a bit of a hassle to delete videos in a more convenient way. Editing an image or a video also looks more organized than before. You now have the ability to set it to light or dark mode, and finally, a draft section to save your video edits. The menu icons were also updated and they also added ones for the extended menu for a bit more flair. And if you haven't noticed already, the pop-up menus have more bounce to them, making the animation more fluid. This leads us to the last visual change I'd like to highlight, smoother animations. They're not easy to spot, but you can find most of these animation refinements in first-party apps. Opening pages within these apps like the gallery, notes, and clock apps add a subtle blur on the background match the more bouncy animation that feels cohesive in certain places. Let's finally talk about the tips and tricks that we came up with. These may include features tucked away into settings that a lot of you guys may not know exist. We also have some tips to make your software experience with Hyper OS better overall. Let's start with getting rid of those ads and bloatware. We all know that Xiaomi phones from low-end to mid-range are plagued with ads and unnecessary bloatware. But as an average user, how do you actually remove them? On top of uninstalling unwanted apps, we'll do a mix of toggling some settings off and disabling notifications per app. So yeah, this might take a while, so bear with me. 
There are other methods out there such as using apps like Kanta and Shizuku for example. But that might be too complicated for an average user. Besides, uninstalling system apps could mess up the OS in a not very good way. I'd rather refrain from doing that. Anyway, here goes disabling ads the average guy way. Starting with the security app, tap the gear icon, scroll down, and disable receive recommendations. While you're there, Tap on security scan and disable scan before installing. This is to prevent the system doing a scan before installing an APK because that page also shows ads. Next, go to cleaner and make sure receive recommendations are disabled as well. Next, we have themes. Head over to my account, then toggle show ads and personal live recommendations off. If you want the music app to solely just play music, turn these settings off. Tap on the equalizer icon on the top left corner, settings, then tap on advanced settings, scroll down, and turn off all the toggles under additional settings. As for Get Apps, I don't use this at all since there's the Google Play Store. However, it shows ads to notifications and it installs apps randomly. As much as I want to disable it natively, it wouldn't be possible. Thus, restricting the app activity and notifications is the key here. Just head over to App Info, tap on Power. Interestingly, it's set to no restrictions by default, and you want to toggle Restrict Background Apps instead. Now for me, Video and File Manager, you want to disable these all together. Go to App Info for me video, then just tap Disable. A warning pops up saying this and that because it's a system app, blah blah blah, ignore that. You're still able to play videos in the gallery, don't worry. The file manager, however, is harder to get rid of. There's no settings to turn off ads, nor an option to disable the app itself. So let's just do the power restriction thing again like what we did with Get Apps. Head on over to App Info, tap on Power, and then toggle Restrict Background Apps. At this point, just use the app called Material Files and of course, the Goated VLC app for playing through the file manager. Game Center is yet another outlet where Xiaomi shows you ads. Again, there's no setting to turn ads off, so we'll set its power mode to restrict background apps too. In Hyper OS 3, they added a home screen search feature. And you've guessed it, it's yet another way for Xiaomi to show you ads. To turn that off, go to the home screen settings by doing a pinch gesture, tap on settings, then more find home screen search, and toggle it off. While you're there, make sure that the minus one screen is set to none because both App Vault and Google Discover show ads. Speaking of App Vault, notice the new widgets? Well, while most may look cute, I wouldn't ever use these on my home setup. Why? Let me show you. Notice when you tap on each widget, they redirect you to a microsite which is linked through the App Vault or two app vaults in this case. These are not built into the OS and just straight up shows you ads whenever it can. Yup, these are adware if that's not clear enough. That also means that we need to set the power mode of the app vault. The specific app will not appear in the app drawer. So go over to settings, apps, and then search app vault. From there, you should be able to set its power mode and disable notifications as well. Now, going back to the home screen and those outdated looking Poco Launcher app icons, there's a quick fix to that an icon pack. There's a theme called Hellcats, which you can search for in-app, and it uses the new Xiaomi app icon. Simply open themes, tap on categories, on the search bar, type in Hellcats, tap download, tap customize, and uncheck all except icons, and voila! You now have the updated app icons. The only difference is that you don't have the app closing animations. Hiding apps from the app drawer is a feature you won't find in the home screen settings itself. It's either hidden on the security app or through searching a specific phrase in the system settings. Inside the security app, scroll down until you see swipe up to open toolbox. From there, you'll find different useful tools like dual apps and second space. But what we're after is the hide apps option under privacy protection. Tap on it and you'll see your apps each having a toggle whether to hide it or not. Searching through the settings is way better though. Just search hidden apps and the hidden apps panel should also appear. It's just weird that I couldn't find it anywhere in the settings, but a simple search should do it anyway. I should mention that not all apps can be hidden. Some system apps like the File Manager or Google Chrome can't be hidden for some reason, so there's that. On the subject of hiding away stuff, Users may also make use of private album inside the gallery app. From there, you can add whatever content you'd like to be hidden from any prying eyes. Simply swipe down from the albums tab and you should be able to access private album after you enter your password. 
Interestingly, there's a similar feature in the file manager, but it adds the ability to make folders, so there are your options. Next, there's the back tap gesture. While there are many actions available, the best use case I can think of is setting it for a quick voice memo. You can never know when it'll come in handy. Say, if you're a journalist, then that's a quick way to get ready for an interview. It doesn't work when the phone is locked though, so that's a minor letdown, I guess? Recent Xiaomi phones now show their battery health similar to the iPhone. It's been there since Hyper OS 2, but the feature never came for older devices that ship with older OS versions. Along with that, the system also shows you the charging cycles to give you an idea if the battery degrades optimally or rather drastically. Speaking of battery decay, users have a more controlled way of charging their Xiaomi devices. This feature is apparently available on Hyper OS 3, letting you set a charging limit to 80%. This way, we can get rid of battery anxiety. But yeah, don't think too much about the battery. These devices are intended to wear out over time, so you're good. And that finally wraps up this video. That was a lot to take in, but hey, I hope this video helped in making your Xiaomi phone a little bit better than its default state. So, do you have your own tips or tricks to share? Let us know in the comment section below. If you find this video helpful or informative, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you won't miss out on any of our future uploads. See us on the social, that's Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok. And see you at tech.com for latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this has been CJ, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! See you later!